In a shocking turn of events, the director of Moana has left the Walt Disney Company, and now he's going to work for John Lasseter over at Skydance. Let's talk about the long train of animation legends and Pixar executives that are going to work for animation legend John Lasseter over at Skydance on that park place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and here with me is animation connoisseur, Mr. Vash Sky. Vash, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Just, you know, going over some of the information related to this story right here, and my golly gee, there's a lot of animation talent here, and man, oh man, does it uh, bring back the memories and nostalgia of some better films than the ones we currently see on a daily basis. <laughs> That's a very good point. Let's talk about uh, Don Hall to start out with, because we're, we're going to be jumping around just a little bit as we go through this story. Uh, Moana co-director Don Hall inks deal with Skydance Animation. Hall won an Academy Award for Big Hero 6, also directed Raya and the Last Dragon and Strange World. We're hearing that he didn't have as much control over Raya and the Last Dragon or Strange world as uh as maybe he should have uh all right skydance animation is getting into business with oscar-winning filmmaker don hall hall known for such disney movies as big hero 6 the original moana has closed a deal with the company the pack will see him create develop and produce an original animated feature for skydance although project details are not currently available the filmmaker launched his career with tarzan the emperor's new groove chicken little he was later credited as head of story for Meet the Robinsons, The Princess and the Frog, before directing Winnie and the Pooh. By the way, he directed Winnie and the Pooh. That one's great. And that was 2D animation. So this is a guy with a, a long history in 2D animation and 3D. There is a there is a dwindling number of people that have that skill set on that level here. So this is a big get for Skydance. It's also uh, pretty embarrassing to Disney. It's fascinating to me that this article doesn't really talk about John Lasseter that much. It just talks about Skydance Animation. Uh, of course, we do know that Skydance Animation, the deal that they had with Apple, that is uh, coming to an end, and they're now working over there with Netflix. Those stories, when they were announced, I mean, they were announced within hours of each other. So uh, it makes me wonder, what were all the things that went into place in order to make that happen? Uh, Vash, just gut reaction. What do you think is going on here with Don Hall, with Disney, and with Skydance? I think it's the merging of a couple of stories that we've been keeping our eyes on, for specifically uh, Alan Ng with his incredible D-Files reports. I mean, just astounding information embedded in those. But it's clear that, well, Disney isn't the place you end up necessarily. It's the place you you leave if you're of the uh, wrong I don't know, uh, immutable characteristics, let's say. And if you can be on the ground floor of potentially another Pixar, why wouldn't you want to do that? And uh, I know a lot of young animators have done that. Now we're seeing some veterans in some pretty high profile stories as we'll go along here. Uh, yes, that's that's very true. Uh, first of all, we're wanting to talk about what's going on over there at Skydance Animation. And obviously Spellbound, that's going to be coming out uh, in a short while. We don't exactly know when it's going to be coming out. We're hearing that they're uh, finalizing that over and it will be coming out on Netflix. First of all, the biggest get for Skydance Animation is this guy right here, uh, Mr. John Lasseter. John Lasseter, he's kind of a big deal. He was he didn't found Pixar. Ed Catmull founded Pixar, which uh, used to be a division of Lucasfilm. For those of you who know your history here, you uh, probably already know that uh, John Lasseter came to Pixar, I want to say, in 1983. And then just some short, uh, what, what, 12 years later, Toy Story comes out and changes the landscape for animation in a huge way. And then, of course, another 10 years after that. And we have Pixar being bought by uh, Walt Disney Animation and changing the Walt Disney Company. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that John Lasseter was the head of animation for Pixar and then the head of animation for the Walt Disney Company. And it also coincides with the string of hits that uh, came out of uh, both of those organizations. Vash, uh, is it a fair statement to say that John Lasseter knows how to make animated films? Oh, he absolutely knows how to make animated films. And he's been doing it in what now... Is it three or four studios now uh, very successfully um, at, at different eras and in, in, in different spaces and so forth? I mean, the, the guy knows how to make a solid picture. And look, there was a string of films. I mean, you got to go back to 2007 uh, when Pixar was finally acquired officially. And up until the time that he left it was about 15 years or so. 
he his name is attached to just about every single Disney production <laughs> that went on at that studio. I'm not just talking Pixar. I'm talking the, the studio wide. He contributed to so many great things and really made his name uh, well known there uh, for being the guy that kind of turned things around there. So, you know, look, if you're a even a veteran animator, you necessarily want to work with the studio that's kind of on the downswing or maybe one that's potentially on the upswing. That's kind of what I want to point out here the most from this video, because, uh, you know, they, they fired John Lester. They did. They couldn't fire his Rolodex and he made some friends and he's calling them up and he's saying, hey, let's get on this train. And yeah. uh, let's do some great work again. It's, that's a fairly good point. Uh, first of all, one of the people that we're going to want to point out is uh, right here. That's Alan Menken. Alan Menken to compose original songs and score for Skydance Animation Spellbound. This is all the way back in 2020. But Alan Menken, uh, Vash, I, you're familiar with this name, I'm assuming. Uh, Alan Menken was uh, responsible for, uh, well, the Menken-Ashman collaboration. Now, it was pre lassiter uh, there actually, it might have been while well, Lasseter was still at the company, but he got fired from Disney the first time there. Uh, he was associated with some small productions here. Can you name a few of them? Oh, a couple of small things like uh, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Bees, Hunchback of Notre Dame, which he actually composed uh, through and through right there. One of his one of his shining moments, as he, he would say, because the orchestral scores and stuff like that. And in, in that film, I'm going to throw something please. here. Uh, the Little Mermaid, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Aladdin, mm -hmm. Pocahontas, mm -hmm. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules. Mm -hmm. uh, he did work on Home of the, on the Range, but uh, not going to go after him for that. He also worked on Tangled. I love his little Star Spangled Man jingle from uh, from Captain America, and uh, I will never not love it, actually. But uh, he's a guy that that essentially, when you look at the Disney Renaissance, and it's not that he happened to be there and worked on some of these things. His work between Alan Menken and Howard Ashman was the entire reason for the Disney Renaissance, those string of Broadway-style hits that really shook up the media landscape. This is a guy that worked on everything that made Disney successful for such a long period of time and put Disney back on the map during that the Disney decade, the Michael Eisner era, and of course, everything that they base the company off of now as far as theme parks that's successful came from Alan Menken and Howard Ashman. So uh, would you say that's fair to say, Vash? Oh, absolutely. I would be. <laughs> that's absolutely fair to say. Once they got that kind of that magical musical touch from both Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, that's when that studio just was launched into the stratosphere. I think Jeffrey Katzenberg rec recognized that as well, which is why he wanted Howard Ashman and Alan Menken to be uh, on hand for being the Beast. But uh, you know, Howard Ashman, very, very unfortunate we lost him so early, but Alan Menken, he has contributed to some, some amazing works and still does to this day. John Lasseter, a guy who recognizes talent, obviously recognizes uh, how, how amazing of a songwriter he is. And it's no surprise that he would pluck him out uh, right. for, uh, for his it, own. And if I can point this out, he the, John Lasseter created the system. Now, I'm not going to say he was the only one who did it, but he was the one who patented and brought it over to Disney. Uh, the, the Pixar brain trust that they have over at Pixar that helps all of the productions be fine-tuned. It's a system in which everyone can criticize everyone and push to make the best product possible and and it's a bunch of filmmakers who are trying to have the most emotional impact possible with a film i there's probably a better way to state that and if you work for pixar and know what that is well then then let me know in the comment section down below uh he brought that over to disney when he came there and uh, they brought the story trust with him of course i need to point out ed catmull's part in all of this ed catmull is not working for skydance that i'm aware of at the moment, but uh, somebody that I'm fairly certain was part of the story trust, Rich Moore, who was the director of Wreck-It Ralph, maybe even Wreck-It Ralph 2 here, uh, March 16th of 2022, Oscar-winning filmmaker behind Zootopia and Wreck-It Ralph entered into a multi-year overall deal with Skydance Animation, which will see him create, develop, and produce original animated features for the studio. Uh, this is yet another super talented person that went over to Skydance uh, after John Lasseter went over there. This is a fascinating thing because we keep hearing that John Lasseter is toxic, but we also hear about all these animation legends that are saying, no, I don't think that's the case, or they're at least willing to risk their careers in order to go over there to Skydance Animation. I don't know what this deal looks like here, but it starts to maybe uh, throw another pebble, maybe creating another crack in the dam at the idea that Lasseter was actually toxic. 
I would agree with that assessment. It's profound just how many people have been going over there in recent years. I've been I've known of uh, quite a few actually uh, who have who have gone over there. You might not know the names, but you know the work, guys. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> the work speaks for itself. And John Lasseter, like I said before, he recognizes that and. He had contacts. He had relationships. He had people who understood who he was and and who, what he could do. And so, when you see him at the head of some, you know, another animation studio, how could you not be pulled into that gravity well? Right. And to me, I don't know if he's forming a new Pixar over there. I don't know if he's trying to do this again. But uh, he's picking up a lot of people here. Uh, by the way, this is from just the last month. This guy right here, Bruce Anderson, uh, head of production for Skydance Animation. He was at Blue Sky. By the way, Blue Sky got bought out by uh, Disney. So I don't want to say he's former Disney. Um, of course, the one that I want to talk about the most right here is uh, this story from February 17th of 2022. Skydance Animation brings Brad Bird into the fold to direct his animated film creation, Ray Gunn. This guy right here, man, he's talented. First of all, voice of Edna Mode. So uh, whenever Disney finally pulls the trigger on doing an Incredibles reboot, they're going to have to do it by revoicing Edna Mode. They probably uh, get a little Asian woman to do it, maybe. I don't know. Just the way that uh, Disney is so predictable these days. But No it's, capes. It's really a murderer's row that he's uh, putting together over there. This is... This is fascinating to me. You know, Ray Gunn, we've, we've heard from a few sources that that's still in the works and, and, and maybe it needs a little bit more time in the shoot there. But uh, I am seeing something happening over there at Skydance Animation. Of course, the problem that I also see is that everything will be going on to Netflix unless it goes into theaters. So hopefully there's one more voice over there at Netflix saying, hey, could you please could you please release this stuff to theaters so people have some idea what it is here? But Vash, who do you think's going next? Oh boy, I, that's uh, that's really tough to say. Um, oh man, who is left? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say Byron Howard. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah that uh, that Howard directed uh, Tangled. Yeah, I don't know Nathan Greno. Where's he at? Well, if you if you keep up with Nathan, maybe you know where he's at. Maybe he's on the other side there already. But think about the films associated with these profound individuals that we were just talking about, and and you know obviously they were instrumental in getting these things made like iron giant ratatouille uh, uh, uh incredibles beauty and the beast aladdin little mermaid zootopia wreck it ralph i mean you just go on and you go on you go on something oh, is brewing over there and we'll be you were messing with me short. you were messing with me but but there it is sky dance tabs nathan greno in multi-year deal with there it is Oh, uh, we'll be I, really powerless. Oh, man. Well, you know, I, I happen to know a thing or two about this. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, uh, that being said, we just want to throw this to our commenters. This is something that is kind of off the radar right now. And I wonder if it's that Netflix deal that puts this off the radar right now. I think I think Skydance is, is not fully formed and is not the powerhouse that Pixar was in 1995. But I think they've got a lot of talent and a lot of people that have been pushed away from Disney right now. If you want a view on what's going on over there at Disney, go check out the D-Files over there on Film Thread, which that series is not yet complete. And uh, we love Alan's work that he does over there, Alan Ng. I see a problem here, and I also see a solution here. If if Skydance Animation can get these things into theaters, right now, the playing field is wide open. When DreamWorks puts something into theaters that maybe isn't the best thing ever, it still makes a little money. When Illumination puts something into theaters and it's a brand new IP, it still makes a little bit of money. Kung Fu Panda 4 made $500 million at the box office before they put that on Peacock. I think Peacock is probably paying uh, a little bit for that as well. Of course, that's one, one pocket to the other. I have some hope that John Lasseter might return here. I don't know. I want to throw this to our commenters. Are we just too obsessed with this Lasseter guy here? Or uh, do we need to be corrected? Do we need our heads put on straight? Or is there something going on over there at Skydance, and we'll be seeing the fruits of it sometime within the next few years. Let us know in the comment section down below. Of course, like this video if you like this video, and consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.